Okay, so we're going to do wave notes today. Um, we're going to do both the types of waves and then also the property properties of waves. And then we will also solve some math problems, um, figuring out things like wavelength, wave speed, and frequency. So let's just start with the different types of waves that we have. So first thing is we're going to write a vocabulary word that we will need to know, and that is going to be medium. So if you've done your reading and your CK-12, you've probably heard the word medium multiple times used. So a medium is the object or substance a wave travels through. So certain types of waves have to have a medium to travel through. Um, sound waves have to have a medium, meaning they have to travel through something, whether it be air molecules, uh, this table that my paper is sitting on, if I knock on it, sound waves will travel through it. Water, okay, it can travel through solids, liquids, gases, as long as it has a medium to travel through. Light waves are a little different. Light waves do not need a medium. They can travel through empty space or a vacuum. So that is what's really important to know is some waves transfer energy, they have to have a medium, and some do not, okay? So in this case, we're gonna be talking mostly of mechanical waves. Mechanical waves typically will need a medium. So they have to move something, the molecules, in order to transfer the wave. Okay. So the first type of wave we're going to talk about is called a transverse wave. So a transverse wave is where the medium, so now we're talking about what it travels through, so the medium moves perpendicular to the wave motion slash energy transfer. So remember, perpendicular means that the objects are going to go in opposite directions, making right angles to each other. So this is what perpendicular means. Okay. So when we're doing a transverse wave, they tend to make sort of an up and down motion. I'll put that in parentheses over here, an up and down motion. So I'm going to draw a quick transverse wave. And it would look something like this. You guys have seen this in pretty much any type of wave reading or the gizmo you've done. Um, so the motion that the perpendicular, I mean that the transverse wave is up and down. So the motion is going to be up and down while the energy transfer is going to go left to right. So this is the movement of energy. So notice this is perpendicular and here is the movement of the medium. So if you pretend this was like a slinky here, the slinky is going to go up and down. You'll see it as the wave travels up and down. Meanwhile, the transfer of energy is going left to right. So this is that perpendicular tra uh, transfer, energy transfer. So the, the motion and the medium are perpendicular to each other. Okay, the second one is called a longitudinal wave. So you did see this in the gizmo as well. So a longitudinal wave, uh, they use a slinky again to make the best um, version of a longitudinal wave. And that is where the medium moves parallel to the wave motion slash energy transfer. So parallel, remember, means 
where they're going the same direction and they're the same space apart the entire time. Okay, so I'm going to just do my best to give you a slinky example. So if you have a slinky and you send a wave through it, you're going to get a wave pulse where it appears like the slinky gets closer together as the pulse travels. So the little coils get closer together. So these two things here would be wave pulses. So there's a pulse, pulse. So you usually can make one of these by pushing on the end of a slinky while hold, someone else is holding it on the other end and you push, push on it in this direction and then the pulse will travel. So you notice that the motion of the medium is going left to right. Also, the energy transfer, so the move, uh, motion, I said movement above, I'll just use motion again here, motion of energy is going left or right as well. So the medium and the energy are both traveling left to right, they're parallel to each other, we call that a longitud longitudinal wave. Sound waves travel in longitudinal waves. So we um, played with sound waves when you did the virtual lab uh, with the trombone and you noticed that, um, that the speed of sound is a specific speed depending on what kind of inner, or environment you're in. So temperature affects speed of sound, altitude, so the higher you go there's less air. So less air molecules means that the energy is going to travel slower because the molecules can't move as quickly because they're not close to each other. So a solid like a table, if you knock on it, the sound will travel faster because the molecules are closer together. Okay, standing wave is the third type. So we watched a video on standing waves. So you should have an idea of how they're made and kind of what they look like. So a standing wave does not appear to move left or right. So remember, it doesn't appear to be moving across. It just appears to be going up and down, up and down. And that's due to the interference of two waves traveling in opposite directions. So when those two waves, one's traveling to the right, the other's traveling to the left, they interfere with each other and you end up getting this standing wave motion. There we go. So it does not appear to move left or right due to the interference of two waves traveling in opposite directions. Okay, so some things that we learned about standing waves when you did that video. So they seem like they'd be a transverse wave, but the difference is, is they aren't, you don't see the wave traveling side to side, just going up and down, up and down, up and down. So if you had this point in the middle, we'll call this point the rest point. So when the waves from the bottom and the top come to rest, it's sort of in the middle there. These spots here on the rest point, they seem to not be moving. Okay, There was a name for these, and we also had one at the end of each wave. So every time the wave came to whatever, so if it was stopped or being held, it's a fixed end, you'd have a, a node there. And then there would be also a fixed end on this side as well. So we'd call those nodes, right? Um, and actually, let's start it. Let's start one up at the top and one low. Okay, so these here are our nodes. In the middle. And then we also had spaces that are up at the top. I'm going to put a little star or an asterisk here. Those were what we were calling, and then they're also down here on when the wave is at its low point, the, the trough we would call these anti-nodes. That's also down here an anti-node. Oh, we're going to stop. Let's 
for anti-nodes. Okay? So those are the important vocabulary words there. So when we're calculating out the wavelength of a standing wave, it's a little different than what we would do for transverse or longitudinal waves. So I'm going to just add this to the bottom down here. So we have a symbol called lambda. Lambda is the symbol for wavelength. Okay? So wavelength of a standing wave equals the distance between nodes multiplied by 2. So really in a transverse wave, the wavelength would be the distance between two points, equal points. So in a transverse wave, this node to this node would be actually the wavelength of a normal transverse wave. So really all they're saying is for a standing wave, you actually have to take two, one, uh, the distance between one set of nodes, one and one, and we multiply it by two. So that's, it's the same as a transverse wave, but in standing waves, you can visibly see the individual nodes. So you take the distance between the two and you multiply it by the number two. Okay? All right. So those are the types of waves. So we have three types, transverse, longitudinal, and standing wave. So now we're going to talk about the properties of waves. Um, I'm going to end this video because I only have 15 minutes at a time. And I'm going to start a new one. And you will need to watch that one separately to get the properties of waves. Okay.